Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, where there will be frolic. There will be frolic, you know. All right, I'm going to be doing a recap of the games from the night before, putting a little pearls in there, talking about why teams won, all of that. I did picks for this. You can check out my picks video. You can find it in my playlist. Uh, I also, for the 34 or 35 people that watch that, you're very happy. Let me tell you that right now. You're very happy. In that video, I also have picks uh, picks for uh, tonight. So you can take a look at that. It's got both yesterday's and today's games in it. Um, so, yeah, it's just my who I think is going to win and all that kind of stuff like that. But now I thought, you know what? I'm going to talk about the games from the night before, maybe talk about some of the things that I think that teams might have to do in the future, uh, moves, all of that stuff like that. Frolic. And I'll even bring up some news that I've heard, rumors that I've heard, all of that kind of stuff. It's good times. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like the four major sports and teams within those four major sports, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network because it does that. That's what it does. Yeah. And you can come talk to me about anything I say in this video at the NHL Pearls, Pearls Perlo Wisdom Show. can't even say my own show. Uh, at, uh, from 3 to 5 Eastern weekdays. 3 to 5 Eastern weekdays. It's an interactive live show. I'll talk whatever you want to talk about, about any team, any time. Uh, you can tell me I suck or whatever you want to do. I don't care. It's all right. Sub yourself up. I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace perlocoptered right to your house. Make sure you uh, cover up your pool, though, if you could. That's what Hernandez. Hernandez, I told them to cover up the pool. Excellent. Hernandez is the Perlocopter driver. And uh, Helen, she's knitting up all the Pearls of Wisdom necklaces. It's, just, it's like crazy. You can just yarns flying everywhere. Woo! It's awesome. Okay, let's take a look at the picks from, or the sh the uh, games from last night and some of the interesting uh, affairs that happened there. Okay, we had the Capitals versus the Lightning. And uh, the Capitals were five and five one and three, and the and the Lightning five three and one. They were five zero oh, and three to start. I had the Lightning winning this game, and I had people saying, "Oh, I'm all over the Capitals and all that kind of stuff." I like, oh, that's cool, you know, it's all good and fun. I'll tell you why though. I took the Lightning to win this game. First of all, the Lightning is are just getting their legs moving and get getting. Uh, um, kind of the, they call it a, a hangover, the playoff hangover or Stanley Cup hangover. Uh, it's, but I like to say that it, it, it's, it's a big drop off from winning a cup to getting back to that regular season again and putting yourself in that mode. It's like a letdown almost. It's sort of like when you have like a super successful road trip and you come back and you see your family and everything and then you got to get going again. Sometimes it takes it takes some time to get going. However, I was watching when I was watching Tampa Bay. I was seeing a team that was starting to gel. Take also into account that they had so many different players on the roster this year, and uh, yeah, it's going to take a little bit. But now, when it comes to Washington in general, Washington does not like playing puck possession teams. Washington likes to get physical. They like you to be physical with them, and they try to spread out your defense. They try long passes and all of those sort of things like that. They basically want to turn the game into a run-and-gun game. Now, the other thing I noticed a lot about Washington was they were, rely they were trying to feed Ovechkin way too much. And uh, I'm pretty sure Cooper, who's one heck of a coach, uh, noticed this and noticed this and said, okay, you know, who's got Ovechkin? Everybody. He, he put players specifically on Ovechkin and had their minds 
turn to the fact that they're going to Ovechkin even more than they ever did before. Sort of like back before when Barry, before Barry Trotz was there. They would do that constantly. Hunter and all of those guys like that. Uh, La- Laviolette, I don't know if it's a mandate from upstairs or whatever. That's what they seem to be doing. So maybe it's just subconscious. I don't know. Um, Brett Leeson scores, I believe that was his first NHL goal. Uh, he That was the other thing. Washington was pretty banged up. And we'll look at that as we go in here. Uh, they had players like Protas and Leeson playing. And look at, they only played five minutes and three minutes. In the five minutes, Leeson managed to pot one. And so they had to shorten up their, their bench quite a bit. So you see Wilson playing 22, Ovechkin, Eller uh, playing 22 minutes. That's like, and Kuznetsov. They were just, by the third period, they were already pretty much bagged out, especially Chase in Tampa Bay, who played a fantastic possession game, keeping the puck away, not getting, keeping things to the outside till you find a place inside, all of that. The Tampa Bay game, they played very well last night. Now, it was against a team that they can do that more effectively to. I find the Washington Capitals are not very good at breaking up passes and all of those sort of things like that. These are things that you practice daily. It's the little things, as they like to call. And I find Washington isn't the greatest at that. And that's the reason why I had Tampa Bay winning this. Uh, Cool things about last night, Sorelli, seven points already um, this year. That's huge for Tampa Bay, of course. They needed Sorelli to step up. Uh, after they lost so many players in the off season, and uh, he gets an opportunity you know, after Johnson go left to Chicago to really become that number two center they've always wanted him to be, and he's doing it. He's freaking doing it. He's doing really well. Braden Pot Point Pot's another one, and uh, then at, at to make it interesting, uh, Connor Sheary gets one on the power play. For uh, Washington, Connor Sheary is like one of the few guys on that team that does all those little things the way you're supposed to in the offensive zone. For a little guy like that, he puts himself out there and uh, um, he puts his body out there and and plays a super gritty game for a guy. His he's only like maybe five eight five nine. Um, as far as ice time is concerned. And, uh, of course, the defense for Washington is going to cause some problems this year. Uh, Nick Jensen has been a lot better than I thought he would be this year now that he's really gotten a chance. For Harvey, for Harvey has been very good as well, actually. Um, I, I thought he would be. Every time he brought him up last year, he looked like he was going to be a gooder. Schultz did not look, he looked terrible last night, though. Orloff was to me was pretty much on non-existent and has been all year, um, and then Van Riemsdyk is about as good as what he could be. Vanacek, I am not a Vanacek guy. I'll say it over and over again. A lot of people are thinking Vanacek's going to be a great goaltender. I've heard it from a lot of places. I think he's a one B that's having to play a one A here, and uh, they they found some. I mean, he didn't play terrible yesterday. Anything. But he didn't knock it out of the park either. Um, and they really needed him to against a Tampa Bay team that was possessing all over the ice, as I are, as I said. Um, Sorelli, normal stuff for Tampa Bay and how they deployed their players. So let's look at how the, they worked their lineups last night. Um, obviously, you, they're, Washington's playing a top-heavy lineup. And like I said, it just seems to me that... They're really stressing getting Ovechkin as many goals as possible to beat that record for for Gretzky because I think they should split up these lines uh, somehow to get more scoring down here. Anthony Mantha again is just is going to be that way, forty to fifty points maybe if you're lucky, and he doesn't do much else. That's the reason why Detroit let him go for Barana. Barana, bad trade. Now Barana was asking to go. He wanted to get his opportunity somewhere to be the guy, I think. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, which makes sense because he was a good soldier there for a long time, playing down further in the lineup than he probably should have been. And uh, 
with Connor McMichael, just a rookie and Sprong, that's not an exciting second line. And then with uh, Haglin, Eller, and Hathaway, Hathaway's playing too high here. But again, I think they had some injuries. Oshie, that's right. Oshie's out and Backstrom's out. Get Oshie and Backstrom out, and this Washington team will probably still, you know, be a bubble team on the playoffs. But I think this defense is not very good. The way they deployed it, I suppose, Fairhairby up here. Orloff has not played well this year, so I wouldn't be putting him up there. I get it, but it doesn't scream Stanley Cup defense, that's for sure. Too bad Hendricks is, is he, okay, he's not injured, thank God, because he had all those injury problems before. But uh, as far as Tampa Bay is concerned now, they, they like I said, they're starting to gel here a little bit. And uh, Cooper, smart coach he is, doesn't get enough credit for how good of a coach he actually is. Um, he's playing, oh, you know what, I didn't notice that. They're putting Stamkos back in, why didn't I notice that last night? Uh, putting Stamkos back in the middle again. He's got 12 points in nine games so far. Steven Stamkos. Here's some fresh pearls of wisdom pearls for you, my friend. <sighs> Coming back from injury and playing as well as you are, fantastic to see. Who doesn't love Stevie Stamkos? Really. If you don't love Stevie Stamkos, then you don't like hockey. He's a, he's a hockey player's hockey player. Great intensity. Uh, and talking about that, uh, Tampa did play with some intensity last night. Both of these teams played down to their position, uh, down to their opposition, quite a bit. But Tampa, when they play a team like Washington, they get up for those games, and they were up for it last night for sure. A um, uh, little bit of problems here in their bottom six as well, as we know when Coleman left and. Goudreau went to the Rangers. They had to restructure their uh, their um, bottom six, and they're having problems putting points up, except for little Alex Boulet, Bar Boulet. Uh, he has he has managed to put. I like him a lot. I think they should play him up here with Colton and Perry, and Maroon should come down here with Bellamar and Radish. He's got an opportunity. He would add something to to that line. This little fire plug guy that can look for those uh, empty uh, rebounds and stuff like that, uh, plus feed off of Corey Perry as well. Uh, as far as the defense is concerned, um, oh, can't wait till Kucherov is back. Uh, still a work in progress, I would think, but they played well last night. Uh, McDonough and Chernak looks, uh, looked probably better than I've seen them all year. It's Schuster and Foot. Schuster seems out of place out there. Uh, I think that when cap opens up a little bit uh, through, as the season goes, you'll see Tampa Bay find a little help on D. Cal Foot uh, is one of those guys that, like Forbert in Boston now, started in L.A. Big guy, 6'2", 200, still gaining body weight. Uh, well, sorry, what am I talking about? 6'3", 209. I was looking at Tyler Radish's uh, not, uh, size. But um, he's taken a little bit of time, a little bit of time. Eventually, though, from what I see last night, he's. I think he's going to be a top four shutdown-ish type guy. Uh, but it was a fun game to watch. Uh, I like Tampa Bay there, and they won. And that's always cool. <laughs> when you want a team to win and they win, that works, especially for what I do. Um Oiler, or sorry, uh, Blackhawks versus the Senators. And yes, I had the Blackhawks to win again, and I got ridiculed a lot for that. Uh, people were saying, why why would you take Chicago? They haven't won yet this year. Well, Kane came back, and uh, there is an energy that Patrick Kane brings to this team. It's not even Taves. It's like a – Taves is like a guy, the guy that brings intensity – Kane balances it out. It's not that he's not necessarily intense, but he's got this air of confidence and fun about him where Taze is like Mr. Serious. And they seem to be, up until now, they seem to be gripping the tick, stick too tight. And I thought that when Kane came back, he would loosen up that room and uh, they would have a fantastic game here. And they did. 
Brand, they had Hagel uh, playing with uh, Kane and Taves for some of the – they moved the lineups quite a bit, and we'll look at that when we look at the lineups here. They moved the lineups quite a bit in this game, trying to find uh, matchups against Ottawa. Uh, Kane played kind of all over the place. It was interesting. Uh, but Brandon Hagel, like, there, there's a good example. Brandon Hagel last night looked a little calmer. He looked a little more confident than he has so far this year. Great example of a guy like Kane coming in and saying, hey, you know what? What we need to do is just chill out a little bit. And they looked like they did chill out a little bit last night. Now, Murray was in net for uh, uh, Ottawa and did not play well. That's part of the reason. But I thought overall they just played that game like they did last year. Um, Sort of like Tampa Bay. They're a puck possession team. Uh, they're not. They're never going to be super. They're never going to be great defensively. Uh, it's not their game. It's a high octane offense that they want to play, and they were moving the puck around really well last night. Kane, of course, got what? Did he get three last night? Yeah, three goals and how many? Two assists. One. Three goals and one assist, first game back after not playing for a long time. Isn't it beautiful to be a superstar? <laughs> Just come back and crush it right away. Freaking awesome. Most guys, it takes a little while to get going. Even Taves has taken a while to get going. And we'll look at their points and stuff after this. As far as Ottawa was concerned, I feel that um, what, the, what I'm getting from Ottawa right now is that they're a little confused with Kachuk's coming back, and they seem to be kind of relying on him. Unlike Kane, Kachuk looks like he's got a, he's not there yet. Sort of like when Nylander came back like a couple games into the season for Toronto, he doesn't look like his game is completely there. And if his game isn't completely there, Ottawa's game is not completely there. It's just as a fact. Um, Kachuk is everything to this team right now. They're not very deep. Uh, they need to play with a uh, Kachuk type energy. I didn't see that all that much. It, it seemed like they were fumbling around quite a bit last night. It just didn't, wasn't working for them at all. And then when you lose confidence in your goaltender and Murray, who did also did not play well for his first game back after being injured or whatever the case may be, it just puts you in a, it puts you further behind than that. Now they're on a back to back playing Minnesota tonight. Wow. I got picked I got a pick for that. Check it out on the video. Um, as far as Chicago, the uh, I was gonna look at minutes. The minutes are about right. They're playing players pretty much where they need to be. I didn't see anything here that maybe Stutzla only playing fourteen minutes, and yeah, I should bring that up. Uh, he's playing two perimeter this year. I, I mentioned it in one of the videos I did previously to this, and I'll stick with it. Uh, I don't know exactly what's happened with Stutzla. I don't know if he's hurting right now or what it is, but Zach Sanford got more minutes than Tim Stutzla. That tells you something. Uh, Smith is a darn good coach, and he sees probably what a lot of us are seeing here. I'm certainly seeing that Stutzla really is not bringing it right now, and it's it's really affecting the team. And they need it, need it, need it if this team's ever going to have a chance at all. Um, my thing here was I kind of wish they would have played Gustafson here maybe. Oh, no, actually, they play Minnesota tomorrow. So that tells you something there. They played Murray here. They're playing Gustafson against Minnesota. So who do they think is the better goaltender? Right? Gustafson. Of course. I mean, now you can say, okay, well, Murray's just getting back, so we're not going to throw him out against Minnesota. True. Gotcha. But I still think they think Gustafson is a better goaltender, and I think Gustafson is a better goaltender. He's going to be the guy. I don't know what they're going to do with Murray. Uh, as far as uh, uh, Chicago is concerned, good move here where they played a lot of minutes to everybody. They, Kane only played 19 minutes last night for his first game back, just getting him used to it. You know, Kane, he can play a lot. He, he can play 22, 23 on a regular basis and quite often does. But they kept it down. Um, look at Carpenter getting 17 minutes. I'm going to look at where they put him in the lineup. 
Jones last night probably played one of his better defensive games this year. It, it, he has been porous defensively. He's putting up points. Um, I still think he's going to gain confidence as the year goes on with Chicago. I don't. He's never going to be great defensively, never. But he can't be horrible defensively. He's been an absolute disaster defensively this year, and he's not that. I don't think he's that. He's more of a just your average or below average defensively, and the offense will pick up. Um, McCabe last night, I saw him making a lot of stretch passes and stuff. I don't know if they were asking him to do that, but he didn't look bad. He didn't look right. didn't look too bad. Uh, Ian Phillips, uh, I, I looked at his stats. I'm not going to look at them now, but he got 13 minutes. He's a shutdown defenseman. Uh, a very young one who doesn't put up many points at all, but he looked pretty good last night that I saw. And Gustafson actually looked good last night. You're not going to hear me say that too much. The other reason why I took Chicago is Mark andre Fleury found his mojo. He'll If he's struggling, what will happen is he'll just have one good game, and then he usually just gives it away from there. He doesn't go back. As soon as he has a good game, and he had, they I can't remember who they played, but he had a he was stopping everything the last game they played. I can't remember who it was. And I'm like, he's gonna crush it from now on this year. I picked Chicago to to be in the four five spot. I still think they're gonna come back and do a lot better than people think. Uh so let's look at how they deployed the lines. Uh Kulik, Doc, and uh Kane. Now again, they that's putting them back to what their lineups were before. What I saw last night was it was Hagel, Taves, and Kane, and uh, which I like. And then Doc was oh, that's why Carpenter was playing so many minutes. He was taking oh, they were just playing him higher in the lineup. They're play, they're they're trying to get offense from their three lines and playing to bring out to to bring out lower. But he played a lot of minutes last night. Didn't get any points. I think also he's very he's a good defensive winger. So they're trying to get some support for their defense and playing Carpenter a lot will help that because most of their players are not very good defense support guys. So that could be the reason why Jones has been horrible too. He's coming from Columbus Blue Jackets where, you know, Tortorella's system was all about stressing that. And now he's like, where, what are we doing here? There's nobody here. I got to go. What do I do with it? He's questioning himself a little bit, I think. Ryan Strom, come on, trade that guy, dude. Trade that guy. He's got to find a home for him playing down there in the fourth line with Entwistle and Johnson. But he just has not improved his uh, skating at all in this so far. And he's 24 years old. It's not likely that that's going to happen. So Dabrinka, Kurashev, and Hardman is interesting. Um, they're, they're heavy on the left side. And I think he's just bringing offense to that. Philip Kurashev usually doesn't play center either. Um, I didn't watch this game a lot last night because it was a blowout. I was paying attention to more of the other games. But some pretty funky lineup changes there. We'll see if they stay that way in the future. But Chicago played really well. Ottawa did not play well really at all. Let's look at uh, Ottawa's um, lineup. Like I said, when Kachuk's not going well, there, there's not much of a top line there. Tim Stutzla struggling, maybe because Nicholas Paws, Paul is his center. That could be a big reason why he's struggling. He, they need to get find another center for him to play with. That's probably why, actually, because I, I don't see him. Uh, Tim Stutzla is not a guy that you're going to see play poor games too often. But if you're a player like him and you don't have a good center to play with, it can be difficult. And he doesn't. Nicholas Paul is not supposed to be in that spot. So Ottawa's really, their depth is being hurt a lot. Shane Pinto coming back, please. They don't know when he's coming back. They need need, need him to come back. He, on defense as well, Shabbat and Zub pretty much did everything last night. Um, the other lines were mediocre at best. Look at it, They're getting no offense from down there. That's just way... You shut down that top defense pairing, and you shut down the Ottawa Senators. And, of course, Murray had a terrible game. Uh, next game. Well, first of all, before I do that, let, let me I forgot to bring up Seattle here, so let's do that. 
next game is going to be the Edmonton Seattle game. And uh, this score, as far as I'm concerned, anyways, didn't really tell the whole story for uh, the game. Uh, Edmonton, I was doing this game with Peyton on the radio. Go check out Peyton on the radio. He is awesome play by play. A guy, I go on with him every once in a while. He's going to be on tonight for the Ottawa Minnesota game. He's pretty excited about that. He wants to see uh, how many he wants. He hasn't did Minnesota yet this year, but the Oilers are seven one and zero. Uh, Kraken three six and one. If it wasn't for the fact that they had Joey Decord on last night, I think because Joey Decord's just not an NHL goaltender. He's just not. Um, he must be a really nice guy because he gets lots of chances in the NHL, but he's not very good. And, uh, like, what, 23 shots? The Oilers were outshot 29 to 23, which is brutal for the line, the offensive lineup that they have. They should be out shooting the crack in 2-1 to one in a game. But their defense was awful. Absolutely terrible. So many times, Nurse and, and Barry getting beat one-on-one, -on -one, over and over and over again. It's been happening all year. They just cannot play one-on-one. -on -one. And that's not very good for a defenseman. Actually, Peyton and I were talking about it last night. We said that we think Nurse should be converted to a forward. I think he'd be a heck of a good forward. But he's not great. Uh, not a great defenseman. He's an, he's an offensive defenseman that... Play should play like a forward if you're going to put him there. Sort of like uh, Burns in San Jose um, or Bufflin when he was in Winnipeg. Just let him go, but get somebody to play d uh, defensively with him. And we'll look at those lineups later. But uh, Dry is a beast. We know that. Um, yeah, Barry gets another uh, assist by passing to Dry Seidel. Um, I thought Seattle played not too bad last night. They played him tough. But when you don't have a goaltender you're very confident in, it makes it difficult. Jaden Swartz, when he scored that goal, he turned uh, Nurse inside and out. Nurse can, has got one th trick. He tries to hit somebody, and if he can't hit him, he can't do it. doesn't appear like he can do anything past that. Um, Gord, from Gordon Giordano, uh, Leon Dreisaitl again. That line looks pretty good. They're, fortunately for the Oilers, their top six is, six is absolutely fantastic. And I wanted to get into that too, and we'll get in when we look at their lineups. Um, that their bottom six is, is – their third line is average. Their fourth line is pathetic. It's seriously pathetic. When we compare the lineups, I think you'll see that Seattle's got a better bottom six than the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Carson Susie Potts went cool, my man. Susie, I love Susie. I think he's so underrated, doesn't get enough credit for how good of a player he was. Duncan Keith did happen to pot one last night. He actually pinched in off the blue line at the right time, and it looked like a, it was a, it was a nice little play. Got to give him props. But uh, besides that, he looked terrible last night too. The Oilers just got away with it. They got away with it last night. Kaylor Yamamoto was had a sick little move to score his goal. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, as far as Seattle and, and player deployment, uh, Ryan Donato, it doesn't matter where he goes. He gets, he starts, his minutes start going down, down, down. Poor defensive forward that doesn't score enough to compensate for his defense. And I imagine that it won't be long before Ryan Donato's starting to be a healthy scratch for uh, Seattle. Uh, Wenberg had a decent game. Funny thing was they had him on a penalty kill last night. He's not a guy I would want on a penalty kill. He's not very good defensively at all, but they did. And uh, I think the Oilers might have scored on it. Yeah, I think it was this one here. But I don't know why they had him out there. Uh, Yanni Gord, oh, this team plays hard. It's a hardworking team, and it's got to play be a hardworking team. You kind of you root for him a little bit because um, you know, who doesn't like a team like that's just kind of thrown together, go out and uh, 
it's it's by committee. Everybody has to have a role and win. And it was fun to watch that if they didn't have Joey Decord last night, who made there was one when Yamamoto made that move on Joey Decord to a backhand. I don't know what Joe check that out if you can find it. I don't know what Joey Decord was doing. I think you can check it out on Cap Friendly. They'll show the game, show the the highlights, and uh, or if you click on the goal, it'll show you the goal. But I don't know what Decord was doing. He sort of like did this, started sliding sideways this way. I I don't know. Check it out. It was weird. Um, Susie got seventeen minutes. Yes, thank you very much. And done. Minutes go down again. St. Louis, same thing. He's got lots of skill, but he's just clueless in his own zone. And if you're playing for a hack stall or a team, a management like Ron Francis, a manager like Ron Francis, you're not going to get minutes if you can't play decent defensively. Overall, I thought this defense played really well. Uh, it's coming together. Larson's playing the best that I think maybe I've ever seen him play. And uh, Alexiak fits in great there. They 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 put them. They they have Larson with Lauzone, and I believe Alexiak now with Susi or Giordano. I we'll check it out in a second. But uh, as far as Edmonton is concerned, uh, sure, I don't know what the heck they're doing. Honestly, we'll look at their scratches. But Benson was the better player out of all of them, and he got seven minutes. Tippett, I don't get why he does the things he does. I don't get it. Turris, nine minutes, that's more like it. More like shouldn't be in the league. He got a goal last night, but I'll tell you, he just looks like he's floating around out there. He's behind the plays. Total, I don't know if he's disinterested or what it is, but he looks awful. McDavid did not crush it like I normally like to see, like like we like to see McDavid crush it. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't like off the charts, but a lot of it had to do with the defense just played so bad. Uh, they got away with it though. Koskinen had a good night. Uh, Bouchard looked fantastic, like usual. He's I still say he's the best defenseman they have. Bouchard to me is better than Nurse. He's better than Barry, Cece, all of them. He plays. He's the best two way defenseman they have by far if they didn't have him i'll tell you and watch edmonton when they do an eastern road trip or something they got to go against the tampa bay's florida's i don't think it's going to be pretty okay let's look at the line deployment jaime mcdavid pulia harvey nugent hopkins dry yamamoto those six are really good yamamoto has been struggling he did score a goal last night uh but the rest of them is they play it's a good top six. Hyman looked fantastic. Uh, Puglia Harvey, he, he's one of those guys that sits in the weeds and waits for the puck, but he plays good defensively. I got no problems with that. But Fogel, Ryan, and Cassian. Ryan, I like him. He's a good defensive center. But I would rather have him on a fourth line to be able to uh, – and, and, uh, on a solid fourth line because I just like more offense from the top three. Uh, Zach Cassian has put up some points. He's terrible defensively, though. Warren Fogel is not bad, so these guys make up for that. It's not a horrible third line, but it's not a great third line either. And But this line, Tyler Benson, sure. I, I, I think Tyler Benson should get more minutes than he's getting. And I don't understand for the life of me why they're not playing Colton Skeever instead of uh, instead of Turris. Turris shouldn't be in this lineup. Put Skeever in there. Uh, oh, Brandon Perlini scratch now already. That makes sense. He can't skate with the darn. They need help on the bottom pairing here, which hopefully they'll fix later if they actually think they need it. That's the thing. I don't know. But... That is the biggest problem for them is their fourth line as far as forwards are concerned. And they need help on defense, and I don't know how they're going to fix that. I heard a rumor that they were in on Manson, who has not had the greatest year and a half. But I'm if they, I, I would still take him over most of the guys they have here easy. CC, Keith, Barry, Kukuk. Kukuk looked terrible last night. Absolutely terrible. It's funny. I'm slamming this team, and they won. But 
I think they just got, they're just relying way too much on their top six. Tell me what you think in the comment section if you think that's the right. As far as uh, Seattle is concerned, um, they mishmash their lineups quite a lineup quite a bit. Tanev Gordon Yarncroc is a fun line to watch. It's like full bore energy line, uh, pressuring the offense as much as they possibly can, cycling down low, all of that. And then you got Schwartz, who is a beast for a guy who's young, like as or as small as he is, but plays like a bat out of hell. And he's fighting for everything with Wenberg and Donskoy, who are soft as butter. So it's it's not the greatest line in the world, to, uh, greatest line in the world, especially for a number one. But they work they worked pretty well last night together. They're they're gelling not too bad. Uh, yeah, and then playing Eberle, see, trying to get offense from now. Remember, I told you third lines compared to third lines. Let's say you put. Yarncroc down here and Eberle up here. Probably that'll end up happening. Donato, Geeky, and uh, Yarncroc. I'll. T I think I take that over Cassian, uh, Ryan, and Fogel. It's close though. It's not great, but I'll take any three guys over the bottom for their fourth line. Uh, they got Max McCormick in there right now, but when they get Appleton back or. Johansson, uh, I would take that fourth line any day over Edmonton's. And as far as their defense concerned, I would take this defense in a heartbeat over Edmonton's defense for sure. The thing is, Edmonton's got dry settle. They got McDavid. They got the superstars that can that can bail their defense out and bail the team out at any time. And Seattle doesn't have that. I still say though, if Grubauer was in last night, Seattle might have won that game. I really think that they would have possibly won that game. Okay.